So right, let's start the video with a cat. Jules. Off the box. Scooch. Scooch. Now nah, come here. Give me lovings. Anywho, as promised, this is a kill shot. We're going to take this thing apart and see what's on the inside. As it goes. I could go through and show you the wiring harness and the ECU and the handheld and all the little fiddly bits, but I'm sure somebody else has already done a review on this. Anywho, there it is. Look at that. Kill shot. Stainless steel linkage. Annular discharge rings above the blades. All that good stuff. Good for distribution. Let's take it apart. Let's start with the fuel bowl. Pull the TPS sensor wire. That's right here. Neat trade secret. This voids the warranty on this if you're just a normal customer and not a super nerd tech engineer for the company. So, we're going to run into this. Look at that. What warranty? We don't need no warranty. Do -do -do. Uh, so these fuel bowls, even though they look like fuel bowls, they kind of are. Let's see here. Give me one second. There we go that good stuff they actually do put a little bit of thread locker on these that weird clear stuff but sometimes you got to heat them up there we go thank you all right number two so inside of here is a couple of fuel injectors <laughs> right there you see right here it, it Feeds in from the fuel ports right there. There's a cross feed tube right there that actually. No, oh, wait. There's a cross feed tube. That's a bolt hole. I'm looking at it upside down. You see what the injector set at right there? Got a little bit of grease on there for the O rings. And here's the ports they put in so they can actually drill th up and through to get to the, uh, the channel for the fuel. That's the bowl. We got right here, these are like an EV6 style fuel injector. Kind of like a gummy connector not the best thing in the world but not the worst thing either these actually stay in there there's some other throttle bodies out there that these are really soft and pliable and they have a tendency because of how crowded they are in here they'll actually kind of smear a smidge and then pull the pins apart from it and you end up with a dead injector we don't really have that problem with ours but the injectors is this a normal little fuel injector look at that it's a hundred pound an hour injector aces part number on it Let's see, it's an AE-1004, so not bad. Four little ports on the end of it. Pretty sweet. Look at this thing. That's number two. We've got a couple of injector connectors, the TPS connector, and we got the map sensor right here. This is actually a four wire, so it's a temperature map, a T-map sensor. It's good for three bars. So if you're going to run boost in one of these, absolutely fine to do. You just got to rescale some stuff into software, which in a later video I will get into how to scale for boost. Not really a big deal. As long as it's nice and sealed up and does a good thing, it can do blow through or it can do draw through. The reason it can do draw through is that the port that the map sensor sets in has a couple access points. Come on, get out of there. There we go. Like, for blow-through application, you don't need to plug or do anything other than put a couple good zip ties on these uh, vacuum ports. But you can blow right through, make positive pressure with a turbo or a uh, centrifugal-style blower. Here's an O-ring that goes on the uh, cross-feed tube that runs down the back of it to the other fuel bowl. So if you only have fuel going in one side, it'll distribute back here. But if you're running a little bit higher horsepower, you want it to uh, feed to both fuel bowls. Just kind of a thing. The more the merrier. So with the map sensor, if you was running like a draw-through application, like on top of a 671 or a 177 or something like that, 
you can actually, in the box, there's a plug that goes in this port right here that you'll red lock tight, stake, or what have you not, so it doesn't fall into your supercharger and eat everything up. And then you unscrew this, and there's a, a thread-in vacuum port, or a boost reference port, as this is called. Um, I personally drilled the first one of these. Now it's a thing. It, you can see the boss right there where it goes from the boost reference and feeds over to the center channel where the map sensor sets. So that's kind of cool. Let's see. Let's get her out. Now one now. O-ring of infinite power. We just pry it out. How about that? There we go. You see that just goes down here. There's a hole drilled in the bottom, which goes under this port, which is how it samples manifold vacuum for the map sensor. Does the same thing. I mean, this is this is where the temperature is, and it's kind of an arbitrary reading of the actual how it heat soaks into this and some of the sampling atmosphere that comes from the intake itself. So that's not even super important, but there it is. Four pins. Three of them for the map sensor, one's just temperature, and then it grounds back through itself. So, kind of fancy, not bad, but good for uh, good for boost, three bars. So this is all the wires from one side, right there. Fuel ball off, injectors out. Really nice machine work. We'll go ahead and do the other side. This is going to be less eventful, unless I got a screw stuck. That'd be fun. Ah, perfect. This should just have two connectors, two injectors. Nothing too wild. Let's see here. All the fittings on the fuel bowl, like these and these, these are actually O-Ring Boss dash six. So it's a six or ORB dash six as it goes. So just means it has an O-Ring Boss on it. So, dash 6 ORB to dash 6 AN. At some point, the later date, we'll have some of these that'll uh, support bigger horsepower and E85 flex fuel stuff, and they'll probably have a little bit bigger fuel channels in there. It's really, that just comes down to the engineers and a bit of math. But, same thing here. Let's see, it kind of just... <clears throat> oh, look, the IAC, I found it. Same thing, here's the uh, the fuel cross-feed port and the bolt holes. I previously pointed to those before. Not really too exciting, but, you know, nicely done. Good machine work, nice sealing surfaces. It's uh, beveled in here, so we can put the O-ring in. It just slides in instead of eating itself alive. Let's see what we got here. Same thing with these. Same thing, it's like a... Very slightly custom industry standard for aftermarket throttle bodies style in, uh, injector connector. They're they're rubbery, but not too rubbery to just fall out under a lot of vibration or what have you. This one is a little bit more crowded in here. Same kind of injector, nothing wild. Get an eyeball on that. Just lovely bit of machining. They really do a pretty good job with that, I tell you. You see it actually goes into a bit of an elevated port, which then goes into these uh, pressed-in uh, discharge rings. So the fuel comes in just behind here and kind of goes up a little bit to these holes that are uh, bored through here and gives a kind of a cross spray pattern as it oscillates between each injector. And it's kind of like a four barrel sequential st uh, strategy for that let's see if i got the right allen wrench today not even close let me go find one Yeah, these are in metric, and I think I just... Where 
Where in the devil have I put those? I'll put them here. Uh -huh. So far, all these have been in American Freedom units. So, let's see. Well, we'll definitely edit this section out. Help me find my Allen wrenches. What'd you do with them? Found them. All right. These are American Freedom units. The big ones are 316 The small ones are 964 And this one is going to be like a 530 seconds, it looks like. The cat had them. One of these days, I'll get a personal assistance to hold my tools for me. Anyways, the thing I'm taking off right here is the IAC, which is your idle air control motor. It's a stepper motor. It's got two in it, and it moves a pintle in and out to help regulate uh, how much air is bypassing the throttle blades to stabilize your idle, known also as slow idle control. The fast idle control option is really we get into timing control. So it'll advance and retard the timing to help stabilize your idle. And this right here will help you get it dialed in. Not bad. There we go. A little pintle right there. If you ever take one of these out and power it up, it'll just push itself right off the end and is a nightmare to get back on. I know this from personal experience. Cute little O-ring in there. There we go. Same thing. This bore right here is actually this hole right here. So as it moves that pintle in and out, you can kind of see my finger in there, it'll plug and unplug that hole and it sends it out through here. So it's a com computer actuated vacuum leak. So the more you have these closed at idle, the more this has to open up, which you end up with a like a huge sucking noise at idle, you hear it just doing a thing. And if you have your throttle blades open up a little bit more, that gets a little bit lesser, and you'll see the count on it, or the position of the IAC, actually start to get lower. So if it really closed, it's really high, so it'll be like 70 or 80, making a heck of a noise. You open these up a little bit, that'll get lower, and you want it around 10 to 20-ish, and that'll kind of get rid of a lot of the noise and all that jazz and help smooth out your idle, especially if these are closed and this is trying to compensate move it in and out it'll actually it'll be searching for air because it needs more so you add a little bit stabilize it out you get too much this actually goes all the way closed you end up with a count of like one or two or what have you not and a high idle that you can't come back from because these are already open with the curb idle adjustment way too much jules is helping yeah not too bad Machining's nice, all that jazz. Let's uh, let's see what's underneath these. So right here's your uh, TPS. That's uh, very much a GM style. So let's see what's under here. I already know what's under here. Electrical bits, things. These uh, throttle position sensors are actually kind of spring-loaded. Some of them, not this one, but some styles are actually adjustable. Ours is uh, it looks at the value and you zero it out. So after you adjust for your IAC, you go back through and do a TPS auto set as it's listed as some under some manufacturers. And that takes the position that you have your throttle blades open to and sets it back to zero saying, this is idle. This is zero throttle doing a thing. And, you know, in the background logic of the software itself, that's when it knows it's in the idle circuit. So... 
If you adjust it and never re-zero your TPS, it could possibly think that it's part cruise, and then your IAC motor will open up in its, to its parked position, and even though you don't have your foot on it, it's going to have a crazy high idle, and it's going to be hard to get stabilized until you re-zero that. Or uh, some other nerd stuff, but yeah, see, that's spring-loaded right there. Nothing crazy. Goes on the end of the shaft. This little flat piece of the shaft right here, the throttle shaft, so that's what she does there. Let's see. Crack her open. Let's see. And they're gone. In case anybody's wondering, yes, I did just drop that screw. You have three vacuum ports here. These go straight to the bottom of the flange. You know, whatever vacuum your intake's got is what's coming out of here. So, like, your brake booster, your vacuum solenoid for something silly, and, uh, like, your PCV. That's normally what you'd hit, hook up there. Or if you had one that goes to your transmission, like you have, like, a old 400 or something, you just run off this vacuum port right here. This small one up here that's elevated, that's kind of hidden, a lot of people miss, is for your vacuum advance. It's ported. So... If you got a cool old distributor, you're running coil negative, no timing control, and you got a vacuum advance with a really nice curve set up in it, and it's all good, that's where you'd hook it to. The ported vacuum is actually above the throttle blades a bit. So you can see, maybe you can't, I don't know. There's a tiny little hole right down there. That is ported vacuum to this guy right here. So it's not under manifold vacuum all the time that way when you crack it open it's responsive to the negative air pressure that kind of comes through there so then it starts to make your vacuum advance work so same thing here nothing crazy just a channel for the wires to come through uh the other end of the the secondary throttle shaft nice machining nice and flat nothing weird no stripped out threads or nothing just Good old-fashioned basic throttle body with some really nice linkage. Easy to adjust. Uh, I've had a few throttle bodies or aftermarket systems that had a lot of slop in it. This one has not very much. But you go to give it the beans, and they kind of hang up and stick, and then you give it the throttle, and it comes open because of the weight of the throttle. This one doesn't seem to have that. It's very consistently smooth. Nice spring pressure. So we'll set that aside. And here's what's underneath that connector. Right there. Your injector, your TPS. This is your map sensor. This over here is your other injectors. And your uh, IAC or IAC. It's nothing special. It's just a, just a little circuit board. Let's take this off anyways. It's also got a coating on it too. So it's kind of weather resistant. So if you get a lot of condensation under your hood because it's an outside car it's uh helps resist any kind of weird corrosion on the electrical pieces let's see what size is this my icrometer is a smidge off today it looks like it's a 330 seconds I get a lot of customers ask me, what's inside the throttle body? What black magic do we have in there? This, that, and the other. It's just a throttle body. These have a bit of Loctite on them, too, so it's kind of kind of afraid I'm going to strip these things as I'm doing this. Watch this be the last thing out, the last thing I strip. Nope. Dang. Y'all didn't get to see it. No worries. One thing I do know is that the owner of the company watches these videos. So he's probably sitting there thinking, why are you disassembling my throttle body? So you'd think there'd be an environmental seal here, but there's no environmental sealing other than the potting compound on the board itself. So this one's got a little bit of dust from where the screw was. But yeah, it's just a printed circuit board with connections there's no chips no nothing just 
here's all the pathways straight to it. Not too terrible, huh? So, got any weird questions about all that stuff, just hit me up in the comments. Uh, oh, side note, these things will do fuel pressure. So, say for instance, you have a really nice regulator with a gauge in the front of it. We can get the uh, 1 8 MPT uh, fuel pressure transducer. Like this one right here is from SSI, so it's like a $150 unit. You can get the $14 ones off of Amazon as well. But they'll thread right into most fuel pressure regulators. And there's on the wiring harness, which, let me move the cat out of the way. There'll be a plug on there. It'll say fuel right there same style connector kind of looks like the one that goes on an ls isn't that funny plug that in you go through the menu options and find it you can actually display what fuel pressure your system has on your handheld if you really wanted to or if you're more interested in your oil pressure you can just ignore the fact that it says fuel on it and plug it into an oil pressure sending unit which you can use this one as an oil pressure sending unit as well stick it at the top of your old small block do a thing click it in bring up the same value and even though it'll say fuel pressure, it's actually indicating your oil pressure. At some point, maybe they'll change it to where this will be fuel slash oil, and you could do either one with it, which will be kind of cool. That way you can really, if you're interested in seeing your oil pressure displayed as oil, that'd be kind of a neat thing. But yeah, that's all that. Next step is we'll be, uh, we'll be installing this on probably my camper. It has a Deuces Wild on it, but I'd like to do a proper install video of this exact one. I want to put it back together, stick it on a camper. We go through some basic setup, and then at some point we're going to do some in-depth diagnostics, different variations of ignition systems, and then some real advanced tuning with one of these. So, yeah, maybe you guys will enjoy. But nevertheless, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm sure there's plenty of trolls out there that are the experts, but... Later, y'all.